Hello and welcome to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. It is another wonderful day that God has given unto us, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Stay tuned to this new life program. I'm your host, Tileno Dian. As usual, dear listener, we have exciting, educating, and entertaining presentations for you. Musavi Muteshi will kick off the program with the health segment on intestinal parasites. Steve Rundu will later nourish our souls during the Bible segment. He will be talking about God's covenant with creations. Great spiritual music also lined up for you. Make sure you don't touch that dial. I was a poor so low I had chosen to dream. Then something wonderful opened that turned me towards heaven and home. God put his hand on my shoulder. He whispered his love so divine. God put his hand on my shoulder. Intestinal parasites are parasites that populate the gastrointestinal tract in humans and other animals. They can live throughout the body, but mostly prefer the intestinal wall. These parasites enter the human body by means such as ingestions of undercooked meat, drinking infected water, and skin absorption. For more on this disease, here is Musavi Muteshi with the health segment. Listener, welcome to our program Health Nuggets. I'm your presenter, Musavi Muteshi. Parasites are organisms that receive their nourishment from other organisms. Today we will look at intestinal parasites. Human intestinal parasites are typically worms or one celled organisms that live within our intestines. They can live anywhere in our body, but they prefer the intestinal wall. There, they use our blood and our body's waste as their food. They are a problem for us humans because they cause inflammation of our intestine and that results in diarrhea and the inability of our body to absorb nutrients from the food we have eaten. Intestinal parasites can also pass through our intestinal wall to spread through our bloodstream to organs of our body such as our liver and our lungs, causing severe disease. Infections of the intestine, such as those caused by parasites, are the second leading cause of death and illness worldwide, killing almost 3 million people every year. Parasites are shed in human and animal waste, and that waste sometimes finds its way into our drinking water and into the water we use to grow our food. People living in developing countries are at an increased risk of parasite infections because their water can become contaminated with parasites due to inadequate sewage systems. Children are also at increased risk because they come into contact with infected dirt in places such as sandboxes and school playgrounds. Certain groups of people are at increased risk of developing parasite infections. God designed our immune system to fight infections such as these caused by parasites. But people who must take steroids or medicines to fight cancer have immune systems that have been weakened, making a parasitic infection more likely. Also, if you have the AIDS virus infection or a cancer such as lymphoma, which weakens your immune system, you are at increased risk. 
Symptoms of parasite infections usually include a mild diarrhea containing mucus that appears a few days to several weeks after infection and lasts from several days to several months. The belly bloats and the infected person develops a lot of gassiness. Weight loss is common as is pale skin. Because a vitamin deficiency often develops, the infected person may feel tired. And they may notice tingling in their arms or legs. At times, unfortunately, there are no symptoms whatever to warn the infected person of their danger. Your doctor can suspect the diagnosis of a parasite infection from the history of prolonged diarrhea and abdominal bloating alone. Testing the human waste for blood can, pre- can provide a clue and blood tests can reveal antibodies to the parasites. The infection can be positively confirmed by testing the diarrhea for parasite eggs or for the parasites themselves. Treatment of the infection is by antiparasite drugs that are now available. These drugs need to be prescribed by a doctor and the instructions the doctor gives need to be followed closely. The drugs will usually treat the infection successfully, but it can return if the infecting source remains. We can become infected by a parasite either by direct or indirect contact with the parasites. Let us first consider the direct contact. There are three ways a direct contact with the parasite can cause infection. The most common way is through person-to-person spread. This happens when a person or a pet with the infection touches you. Their touch allows the parasite to spread directly from their skin to yours. Handling human and animal waste is the second way to spread the infection. The waste of an infected person or pet contains parasites as long as the infection lasts, and that can be months to even years after the symptoms have stopped. Finally, an infected mother can pass the parasite to her unborn baby through her bloodstream. Indirect contact is the other method of spreading the parasite. Parasites remain on objects such as doorknobs or faucet handles for extended periods of time. When you touch a doorknob previously handled by someone with parasites on their skin, the parasites they leave behind can transfer to your hands. Then, if you touch your eyes, your mouth, your nose before washing your hands, you can become infected. Another important method of spread through indirect contact is the passing of parasites through contaminated food and water. Fruit and vegetables that have been grown using contaminated water can have parasites and presented on their surface. If you then eat them without first washing or cooking them, you can become infected. What can you do to prevent developing an intestinal parasitic infection? Remember that parasite infections result either from your coming into direct contact with the parasite or by indirect contact with contaminated sources such as food exposed to contaminated water or sewage. So, wash your hands with soap after using the toilet and before eating. Wash your children after they play outdoors. Eat only the raw fruit you can peel for yourself wash your vegetables with clean water and cook your other food before you eat it. Washing food in clean water removes parasites that may be on the surface and boiling or cooking food kills all parasites. Freezing or smoking food does not. If necessary, boil the water you use to wash your food to be sure it is safe. You are traveling, drink only bottled water and drinks. Avoid eating refined sugar foods such as those found in highly processed foods, sweets and junk foods that contain added sugar. Parasites feed on refined sugar. Other ways to avoid infection is to never share your toothbrush, comb, razor, drinking glasses or dining utensils with anyone. If you have been treated for intestinal parasite infection, get Retested to be sure the parasites are truly gone. Carefully follow your doctor's advice and instructions concerning ways you can avoid becoming reinfected. Getting a second parasite infection can cause even more serious health problems. Health Nuggets is written by Dr. Richard Yokel, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult a medical profession in your area. Thank you for listening. If at all you are just joining us, 
This is New Life Program coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your presenter, Tileno Diambo. To play part in this program, send us your comments and thoughts to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PO Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. As I see the day approaching, day when Christ will come again, here's a question I keep asking of myself and of all men. When He comes, when He comes, when He comes, Up next is Steve Rundu with the Bible segment. Today, he will be talking about the agreement that God had with the creations as they were put here on earth. Be blessed. God's Covenant with creation. We will read from Genesis chapter 8 from verse 21 all the way to chapter 9 verse 17. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I cast the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood, and never again will I destroy all things, creatures, as I have done. As long as the earth endures seed time and harvest, Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God's covenant with Noah starts from chapter 9. Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in the number of, and fill the earth. The fear and the dread of you will fall upon all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air, upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea. They are given into your hands. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you, just as I gave you the green plants, I will now give you everything. But you must not eat meat that its lifeblood is still in it, and for your lifeblood I will surely demand an accounting. I will demand an accounting from every animal and from each man too. I will demand an accounting for the life of his fellow men. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made man. As for you, be fruitful and increase in number. Multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons, With him I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, 
livestock and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you, never again will I, will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant. I am making between me and you and every living creature with you a covenant of all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds, and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. God's covenant with creation. Genesis chapter 8 verse 21 and to 22 we get to listen in God's responses to Noah's sacrifice. After blessing Noah and his family, God repeats in 9 verse 11 Genesis his pledge from Genesis 8 verse 21. He follows up by establishing a physical sign to remind people forever of his everlasting promise. God responded to Noah's burnt offerings by covenanting with Noah, his descendants, and every living creature in a divine oath to sustain and preserve creation. Comments Stewardship theologian Ronald E. Vallet that God's covenant with Noah had a universal dimension. It was unconditional, it was unilateral and everlasting, and it included all vassal dimensions in it. It was unconditional, and it included all people. Because it was made apart from all before Israel, it is upheld independent of the community of faith of Israel. God's covenant with Noah made other covenants possible. Veteran Bible expositor J. Alec Mortier reflects on the covenant and signs. If in the world, as constituted before the flood, there had been such a thing as rainbow, the Lord here took the family and filled it with new meaning, just as later he will do with bread and wine. But the world translated rainbow is actually bow, the weapon. It is as if the Lord was saying, See, the war is over. I have hung up my bow. And ever after, as soon as a threat loomed, Noah saw to the sign that no ultimate threat could again touch him the Lord has promised. Violet recalls, Only twice in my life have I seen a complete double rainbow and broken from horizon to horizon. The two rainbows have taken on a new meaning for me. The primary rainbow is to remind God of the promise of care and concern. The secondary rainbow, subdued and inevitably related to the primary rainbow, speaks to me of our human care. And humans have a responsibility toward the non-human recipients of God's promise of care for the earth and all its inhabitants. That is, as per Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2 and also Hosea chapter 2 verse 18. As an addendum to this Genesis account, Mortier notes that in Noah humanity had a new start, a second chance. This is why Genesis 9 verse 1 all the way to 7 echoes the account of Eden. Genesis 1 also verse 28. But suddenly, Noah with standing grace was still a sinner, the founder of a new humanity. And like his father Adam, he was only able to have sons in his own likeness. And a Milton writes in Paradise Lost, So it will remain till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful state. Here are the points to think about. Point number one. What part of the covenant mentioned in this passage relates to the world today? Point number two. How does God's covenant affect the way you respond to your earthly care and responsibility. Point number three, 
What does Hosea 2 verse 18 tell you about the future of this earth? There are points to think about and to act on. And the major point that I bring to you is that what can you do today to respond to the covenantal promises outlined in this passage? And there are any changes you need to make in your lifestyle to become a more responsible steward of the earth? Let us all pray to God that He can make us good stewards by reflecting back on this covenant that He gave unto His creation. Let us pray. Father who art in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your covenant. We thank you for your promises through that covenant and the sign of the covenant. Lord, we only ask that you help us do our part of the covenant so that, Lord, we can become good stewards to this earth. For we have prayed all this, trusting and believing in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the end of our program today. It has been nice and fulfilling to have your attention. Remember to send us your comments and thoughts to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. On behalf of my producer, I say thank you and wish you a peaceful and fruitful day. I have been your presenter, Tileno Diambo. There's a wonderful place we call home. Tis a city of glory divine. It is built in the garden of rest. And the beautiful home shall be more. Oh, that wonderful heaven so blessed. Where Jesus the Master has gone To prepare us His glorious home They bid us a welcome to come Oh, what a city for food Just across in that beautiful time When the elders reach a Sweet 
precious peace to my soul it will be to behold such a glorious sight when the sun and the moon may not shine but the glory of God is the light oh what a beautiful thought just a cross in the fields in the blind when the angels sing the chorus gospel to all men. Come quickly, Lord, my soul does say, and bring the happy day. Happy day, oh happy day. Happy day, oh happy day. Happy day, oh, happy day. come quickly, Lord, no more delay. Some 